Blair, and I'm here today to talk to you about your casing. Now, pay attention because you need to know this information so you can make an informed decision about your well. When we drill a hole in the ground, we go through various layers of rock, sand, gravel, and clay, and sometimes various aquifers. We have to seal off all the zones we don't want and just let water in from the good zone. And the way that we do that is with casing. We install pipe down into the well that holds all those materials back while still allowing water in from the aquifer that we want. The good news is that there are several different products for us to use as your casing, depending upon the depth and size of your well, the quality of your water, and the price that you're willing to pay. The most common water well casing is PVC. It's great because of its resistance to corrosion and low cost. And for many wells, it's the right choice. But when wells get too big or too deep, you can't exceed the capabilities of PVC. The second most common casing is steel. Everybody likes steel. This stuff's crazy strong. You're not gonna break it. And it handles heat better than any product on the market. But steel rusts, especially when it gets wet. Your pump is gonna be pumping up little bits of this casing from day one. And that rusty water coats everything in an orange film. Now, there are things we can do at the surface to minimize any damage that would cause. But there's nothing we can do about the fact that down in your hole, your casing is rusting away. The longevity of this casing it really depends upon the quality of your water, but we see it lasting anywhere from 20 to 50 years. And when it rusts through, you have to drill a new well. The last option I have for you is fiberglass casing. This stuff's been around for decades, but it was only recently approved by the state of Texas for use in private wells. It won't rust or corrode, and it handles heat up to 300 degrees, which is hotter than you're ever gonna see in your well. And it's crazy strong, depending upon how thick you get it. Now. The cost is a little higher than steel, but with the low installation cost, it winds up being about the same. Now, it's probably too expensive for your average household domestic well. We use this mainly on our large irrigation wells. For household wells, we prefer to use PVC. The biggest problem we have with this stuff is the collapse pressure rating. So what is collapse pressure? Well, after we drill a well, we pull all the drill stem out and we slide the casing down the hole. The first thing to go in is the perforated casing. This lets the water in from the aquifer. Right above that, we have a packer. Now this is a shale trap. It's one of the types of packers we use, and its job is to seal between the casing and the borehole wall. It'll catch all that sand, clay, gravel, rocks, and bad water that may be present above your production zone. Its job is just to seal that off so it doesn't contaminate your well. Once that seal is set, water starts to build up on the outside of the casing as it seeps in over time and that water is trying to crush this casing. Just like water tries to crush a submarine when it goes down deep. Every 100 feet of water is 43.3 PSI. So if this packer is say at 600 feet, you'd have about 260 PSI trying to crush this casing. And that is collapse pressure. Now you also have water on the inside of the casing pushing back. This obviously will fluctuate depending upon the water level and water levels go up and down with recharge, droughts, and pumping activities. This change in water level has played a role in the collapse of many wells in the last few years. When the wells were drilled, the water level inside the casing was high. But as more and more wells were drilled, the water levels drop. And in some cases, this has led to the casing being crushed by the weight of all that water and sediment. In most cases, we have to drill a new well. As my dad used to tell me, if you don't have the money to do it right the first time, you sure don't have the money to do it over again. So let's choose a casing that can handle the collapse pressure that your well could experience in its lifetime. Now that can be a hard thing to predict, but your project manager can guide you through this decision. Let's take a look at the three main PVC casing options. First, you have Schedule 40 casing. Most of the time, this is four inch pipe like this one. The inside diameter is right at four inches, so you can install a four inch submersible pump inside, but it will be tight. The wall thickness is 0.237 inches, and that gives you a collapse pressure rating of 158 PSI. Now, that is not a working rating with the actual breaking point being much higher. That is where it will actually break. So don't exceed it or you'll have to redrill. That lets you set a packer at 365 feet deep. Any deeper than that, and you're running a risk of collapse. The next option is to go to SDR 17 casing. This is typically four and a half inch pipe. The wall thickness is 0.291 inches. 
and the inside diameter is about 4.3 inches. Here in our area, this is the most common casing used. It has a collapse pressure rating of 224 PSI. That means you can set a packer at 517 feet without the fear of it collapsing. On a well like that, you might have 60 feet of perforated casing below the packer. So if your well is over 570 feet deep, you need to pay close attention to this. Yes, I know, there are thousands of wells out there using this casing that are much deeper than this that haven't collapsed. Yet. But that water level drops a little more every year. And I talk to too many customers who have had this exact experience. I am getting tired of doing this. It's not fun for me or you. So let's get this right the first time. Now there's only one grade of PVC casing available that is stronger than that, and it's Schedule 80. We have to go up to five inch because the wall is so thick that you can't get a four inch pump in a pipe that's smaller. The wall is 0.375 inches thick and the inside diameter is 4.8. This pipe has a collapse pressure rating of 347 PSI, which means the packer can be set at 801 feet. We have to drill a larger diameter hole for this bigger pipe, so the cost goes up quite a bit. But in the end, it's worth it. Anything deeper than that requires that we use fiberglass or steel casing. We don't want to install a product that is likely to fail. Now let's take a look at the packer. This is a shale trap. It's a rubber flexible packer and uh, we install it with a stainless steel band just above your production zone and actually we'll put three or four of these things just above the production zone. If we have a crack in the rock or a cave or something like that, we certainly don't want that soft material traveling around this and getting in and contaminating the well. And to help it seal, we'll put burlap above it and bentonite clay and concrete to really make sure we got a good seal that's going to last a lifetime. Now, if we have any loose material in the production zone, you might have some clay or sand or gravel down in the production zone, we usually do what we call a gravel pack. For that, we have our perforated casing that we install down in our well, and then we will have pea gravel that we pour inside the well on the outside of the casing. And this just forms a barrier to stop that clay sand from coming in while allowing the water to penetrate through it and go right into the perforated casing. Now if you have some uh, really fine sand, you've got to get some smaller gravel. So we use what we call a Brady sand for that. It's a really fine gravel or a coarse sand and it will do a better job of stopping the really, really fine stuff. Now the smaller we go with that, the less production we're going to get through that sand because it's so small. So we don't want to use it unless we have to, but when you need it, it's the right thing to use. Now below the packer, we have three main options. Open hole completion, perforated casing, and manufactured screen. Now there are pros and cons to each, so pay attention. The open hole completion is exactly what it sounds like. There is no pipe below the bottom packer. And being open like that is certainly cheaper because you don't have any pipe to buy. And it's easier to clean out. If you get sediment built up in the bottom of the well, we can go in and jet that out. The downside is that you might have problems with more sediment coming in that you could have stopped had you had the proper casing in there. Or you might have rocks fall in and trap your pump, or your pump might get stuck below the bottom of this pipe and you might not be able to get it back out. There's some tricks we can use to get that fixed right. But open hole completion is certainly an old way that we used to do things and we certainly don't do it that much anymore. Now the second option is perforated casing. And for that, we simply take a drill bit and we just drill holes in our pipe. We don't use chainsaw slots because it really weakens the pipe. We want just something small that's gonna let water in without changing the integrity of the pipe. And we can do different size holes depending upon what's going on on the outside of the casing. Your pump is inside of here and it's being protected from any kind of damage from rocks falling in on it, things like that. This is the most common way that we install casing in rock aquifers. The last option we have for you is manufactured screen. It's just regular pipe that the manufacturer cuts really, really fine slots in. You remember that uh, gravel pack that we had, that really fine gravel? If you're gonna stop that from coming in, you're not gonna do that with these little quarter inch holes. So the way that we do that is with manufactured screen. The problem is that this stuff is very brittle. Imagine trying to get 60 feet of this down in a well 800 feet with rocks and other things that could break this stuff. It isn't likely to survive. 
So the way that we deal with that is we take our regular casing and we drill small holes in it and then we take this a little bit larger manufactured screen and slide it over our perforated casing. This creates a double pipe system. It has the strength of regular pipe but the filtering ability of the manufactured screen. The cost difference is minimal but the results are amazing. Now the state of Texas does regulate how we do this and their rules state that we're not allowed to use perforated casing alone unless we get you to sign a waiver. So if your project manager has designed it with perforated casing alone, you're going to see a waiver attached to your contract. We're going to have to have that signed before we're allowed to complete your well in that manner. Just know that your project manager is designing your well in a way that works best for your situation. Now you should understand all of your casing options. If you've got any questions, get with your project manager. And thank you for letting us be your well man.